everyone. Hello, hello, hello. How is it going? Can you guys hear me? I'm just going to assume you can. Okay. <laughs> I know it's been quite a while since, well, the 12th, I believe, is my last live show. Yeah, the 12th was my last live show, as far as my memory serves me. Hi, e -bros. how are you doing? Welcome to the Truth Show. Okay, great. <laughs> Thanks for telling me. I am Keisha. My name is Keisha, and I will discuss the trial featuring attorney Fanny Willis in this video. How does she perform? I know I'm days late. Believe it or not, I have not been feeling well. Um, I was in a lot of pain for about almost a week. It was just terrible times for me. And I have enough energy to get up here and do any live show. That um, Kim, that Kim Troll video, I finished that. Goodness. Well, I would have finished it. But I kept having to stop because I was tired and in pain. It was just... It's been a crazy week for me. It's been crazy. Seriously. I'm feeling a lot better now, so I'm happy. Really? Oh my gosh. The first live show. Welcome. <laughs> uh, I'm fine now, e -Rose. Thanks. Hi, Kimberly. I'm fine. Thank you. But anyways, yes. Uh, additionally, okay, aside from Fanny Willis, how does she do? How does she perform? What are people saying? What is true? What is false? I'm here to clear up all that malarkey. Um, then we're going to do a little brief summary of Jennifer Lopez's video album that's on Prime Video. I did watch it. Believe it or not, I did watch it. And assuming that's pretty much what it is, it is a video album. Or is it a movie? I have no idea. Anyway, and I also will discuss hot topics such as T.D. Jakes and his battle with uh, Gino Jennings and a lot more. Kelly Rowland, any other topics or any other questions you guys might have, we'll discuss that as well toward the end of the show so sit back and relax if you are in the car i try to describe what i'm showing people in descriptive as possible other than that let's get started please note that this is all alleged i've never met any of these people i deeply researched all of my information This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. And I, I love you guys too. All right, we're going to start with Fanny Willis. Do any of you know who Fanny Willis is? I guess I should have told you guys, but she is a district attorney for Georgia down there. And she is the one pretty much headlining the case against Trump regarding this, um, this 22 um, rigged election that he'd been claiming. You know, that whole case legal battle. Okay, she's kind of on the front line for this whole thing. And I'm going to give you a brief summary about that because I'm sure some of you probably don't even know what the heck is going on. So hopefully by the end of the show and the segment, you will have a clear understanding of what's going on with that. Okay? All right. Now, as you know, the Fannie Willis case has been making headlines recently. Fulton County, that's Fulton, F-U-L-T-O-N. District Attorney Fannie Willis is at the center of this legal battle related to the Georgia election interference case against former President Donald Trump. Now, here are the key points, okay? Here's the case background. In August, Willis charged Trump and 18 co- the 18, yeah, 18, one eight co-defendants, okay, with conspiring to overturn the 2020 presidential election in Georgia. Four defendants have pleaded guilty, while Trump, who faces 13 counts, has not pleaded guilty. He insists on saying he's innocent of all these charges. He is innocent. He has not done anything wrong. He didn't take no boxes. He had every right to take these boxes. He is declaring his innocence. 
regardless of the evidence. Uh-huh. So this is what we're facing. This is the woman here. So far, she brought ample amount of evidence regarding all of these allegations against Trump. But you know how Trump gets down. He never meant anything. He don't care if you have video of him. He'll still try to lie his way out of that too. So let's move on from that. And then we're going to get to the subject of the allegations against Fannie Willits. Why, why was she brought to the front line of this whole entire thing? Well, we'll explain that in a minute. You see, Trump and his co-defendants seek to disqualify Willis based on the allegations that she and Nathan Wade, okay, that this is Nathan Wade right here, okay, that she and Nathan Wade, he's a handsome man too, uh, the special prosecutor she hired for the case engaged in an improper romantic relationship. The alleged relationship is claimed to have financially benefited Willis. Uh-huh. Willis and Wade have acknowledged having a personal relationship, but deny any wrongdoing. Yeah. So, you you got you guys have to understand here. Trump has a crazy, crazy habit of attacking women. Despite race, you know, he feel, okay, this is a female headline. This. I can do this. I mean, him bullying and seriously showing his seniority, because in his mind, women are, they pretty much diminished. They are beneath him he's a man he's seniority he's power over women they should be bowing down to me who this woman thinks she is going up against me no no she needs to know her place so this is what trump does okay this is what he does but he never went against a a negro woman before okay as if we're not dealing with enough. Of course, we're going to come with some evidence knowing who we are up against. I mean, she's not stupid. So he tried to deal with this whole thing by digging into her personal life. I did a brief background with uh, Fanny. She get more threats than anyone. They have to hire special security. She has to constantly change her location. She had to constantly change her address, her name. They have to constantly go through very very eclectic and very artistic and creative ways to hide her because they are forever threatening her life all the time all the time ever since her face got put in the front line and trump made her a target she is in fear for her life every day which is why she says she barely goes out for lunch she barely does this she barely does that because she's not going to tell them why because it's not you know great court decorum to tell them why you got to keep it strictly professional i'm not going to tell you that i get threats all the time that i'm afraid to go to sleep you know and i don't know why my personal life is becoming the front line of the situation i did everything legally you know but i like the fact that she went in and pretty much went down the line of the people who are trying to prosecute her and their personal relationships you can find that on tiktok and they felt bad like, like you guys are talking about me let's talk about your personal relationships you, what about you and this person? And I forgot the whole, the details about it. If I find the link, I'll put it in the um, comment section. You guys can check that video out. But she went through every prosecutor who was trying to prosecute her and threw the same questions to them that they were throwing to her. Even though hers was completely legitimate, but they try to find some illegitimate reasons why it may have been some kind of conflict of interest. There weren't any conflict of interest, but they tried to find it, okay? This is low. Trump always does. He did the same thing with Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton had been exonerated and pretty much proven everything she said about Trump was correct. He just doesn't have respect for women. If you guys saw the video I did before where I mentioned, um, well, I didn't do it. It was a, a colleague of mine. She did it. She, this is on top five and top six. I try to leave the link at the end of the video. Go check that out where I talk about the top six uh, domestic violence case in Hollywood. And he was amongst of those. So I'll make sure I try to leave that link by the end of this video. Okay. Now, getting to the stakes in this case. The stakes and impact. If Trump and his co-defendants succeeded in disqualifying, if they succeed in disqualifying Willis, it could derail the entire case. The district attorney office knows that time is running out before the 2024 election. They aim to proceed with the trial. So they feel like she's a woman. We could probably get her. Let's just go full throttle and try to fool her illegitimacy. Let's just do this. Because if we get her, we could throw the whole drug thing out and move on to bigger problems. This is what they're doing. They're playing dirty. 
So this is why they're doing this. So they can derail the entire case against them and pertaining to the Georgia 2024, well, the 22, the 2020 election. I'm sorry, the 2020 election. This is what they're trying to do. Okay. They're not really doing very good, but you know, Trump goes really low sometimes. So it is what it is. Now, during the evidentiary hearing, Okay, Willis sought to undermine the credibility of her former law partner, Terrence Bradley. Now, Bradley had left the farm following the disagreement, but the details remain privileged. However, and he denied any allegation of sexual harassment essay made against him. So he denied everything against him. He said, I didn't do anything. I don't know what you're talking about, what's going on, yada, yada, yada. As it is well known Trump tends to target women, as I've said before, believing that doing so benefits him. You gotta understand this. He holds the belief again that he is superior to women and perceives them as weak. However, he has never, like I stated, encountered a Negro slash black woman before. We are used to this stigma against us. Now, the trial was progressing smoothly and many individuals who hadn't followed the entire proceedings believed that Willis has misused campaign funds. So it was a part of the video. She said, well, I used the funds and I put the funds in my um, house and cash or something like that, paraphrasing. Yeah, that's what she said. And that's been some of the narrative that people has been following all over the internet, all over TikTok, all over X, but I'm going to go ahead and bust that out right now because apparently they they didn't listen to the whole video. And that's the problem. You go up, uh, you always make your assumptions and your narrative off something you did not check for yourself. You always want to do your own research. Do not comment on someone else's research because you don't know if they're only dissecting the information they get to fit their own narrative and their own way of thinking of whoever they're doing the subject on. Do your own research. And I'm going to bring the truth and the light to this illegitimate and have done research that a lot of hater TikTok people and ex people are doing about Fannie Willis. We're going to go ahead and debunk that little section where they said that she misused campaign funds for personal expenses. Once again, what have I always emphasized to all of you? Yeah. Listening to the complete narrative from all perspectives is essential rather than following the majority. Form your own opinions, okay? Always form your own opinions. Do not follow someone else's narrative. Never. Don't follow mine. Don't follow anyone's. Do your own research. You feel like something is not right about this? Do your own research. Prove me wrong, you know? Good luck with that, but, you know, I always tell people to do that if they need to. Okay, so here is the video we're going to um, talk about where they, they are saying that she used some of the campaign funds. Here's the video. This lady explains it. She says she's not a lawyer, but she definitely goes into a lot of uh, legal documents. She break it down for you. So here you go. I'm not a lawyer, but have you seen the claim going around that when Fonnie was on the stand, she said she took some of her campaign money and kept it in the house? I'm going to play the clip. You're a woman and you go on a date with a man, you better have $200 in your pocket. So if that man acts up, you can go where you want to go. So I keep cash in my house and I don't keep cash as good in my purse like I used to. Um, I don't go on many dates, but when you go on a date, you should have cash in your pocket. So my question was, where did that cash originally come from? If it didn't come out of the bank? Cash is uh, fungible. I had cash for years in my house. So for me to tell you the source of when it comes from, when you go to Publix and you buy something, you get fifty dollars. You throw it in there. When it's been my whole life, when I took out a large amount of money on my first campaign, I kept some of the cash of that. Like to tell you, I just have cash in my house. I don't have as much today as I would normally have, but I'm building back up now. So you just put money in. It's a very good practice. I would advise it to all women. Now, during that same testimony, while she was still being questioned by Ashley Merchant, she gave a bit more context to some money she took out to fund her campaign. Now, she obviously didn't say what I just said is in reference to what I'm about to say. But as someone who watched the entire testimony, it's pretty obvious that these two things are related. This is my opinion and I'm not a lawyer. So I'm going to play this next clip and then you can decide. 
context for the clip, they are speaking about a book called Find Me the Votes, a hard charging Georgia prosecutor, a rogue president, and a plot to steal the election. So when Ashley Merchant is referencing these quotes, she's talking about quotes that Fannie Willis supposedly gave the author of this book. You were quoted in the book, and I will give you a chance to say if this is a misquote. You were quoted, I really, when they asked you about if you wanted to run for office for DA, you were quoted, I really don't want to be financially effed up again. Do you remember saying that? So what that refers to, so that- My question been... first is if you remember saying that. I remember saying something similar to that, but I would like to be able to explain what that's, that's in fine. reference to. That's not um, in reference to anything else. It was a huge sacrifice to be district attorney in Fulton County, huge. I was doing just fine. I had a municipal court judgeship that was paying me a hundred something thousand dollars a year and like you got to show up twice a week it, easiest thing i've ever done in life i also had private clients that were um paying me to represent them so i was able to have a law practice and that what i was talking about is i ran for judge when i ran for judge i took fifty thousand dollars of my personal money out of my retirement and that money ended up being lost and I know when you bet on yourself, you're going to have to bet money on yourself. And so what I was talking about was not wanting to go through the personal financial expense of running for office. By no means did I think that I was going to uh, be financially in a bad position once I won. Let's talk about what I was up against because it's important to understand that comment. I had a district attorney who had been here for 24 years. People, no, 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 this is it's very relevant questions. as to what my mindset was about this. So I'm trying to answer your question. It's so what I was saying is I... Failure solely to finance. Right, but it, it is about my finances. Right, about if I, I didn't, nobody put me in this seat. So I had already run for office once. I had spent $50,000 of my own money running and it was bamboos, nothing. And so when I'm talking to those offers, I'm talking about the contemplation of the sacrifice of the run not the sacrifice of once you become DA. The odds were against me. I was likely going to lose uh, the election based on who I was running against. So that needs to be in the, the appropriate context. Isn't it true that the authors also wrote, and you can dispute this if, if you'd like, um, that you were broke after that race? The 2018 race? Yes. Yeah, that was, that was a hard race. I wasn't broke like I didn't have any. So broke is relative to depending where you are, but uh, that hurt to lose that fifty thousand dollars. So I'm sure my mental mindset was like, I just gave fifty thousand dollars away. Right. So they characterized it from their conversations <clears throat> with you that you were broke. You had poured your own money into the campaign, and you weren't able to pay your own bills because of your. Oh, I'm sorry. Your clients couldn't pay their bills to you, and you had a paltry array of family and asset forfeiture cases. It says you were trying to make it month to month. Um, is that an accurate depiction of your financial situation at that point? I would want to read that, but I, I don't. I don't remember clients not being able to pay their bills, or clients who couldn't pay their bills ain't clients. So no. So my question was just if this was a fair and accurate representation, where it says you were trying to make it month to month at that point. No, I don't think that that is actually a fair and accurate representation. But I am certain that after the 2018 election, um, I'm still not really happy about having given up that fifty thousand. So you can decide when Fani says that she took out money for her campaign in context, does it seem she's referring to the $50,000 that, that she later referenced in that same testimony multiple times? See, you see how important it is to always look. Thank you, Nap, for that. Thank you so much. Yeah, hit that like button, you guys. It is important to always Form your own narrative, but do not form your own opinion of someone until you do your own research because you don't know where their opinion is coming from. Is it coming from a neutral, legitimate place or is it coming from a biased and sometimes racist place? You just don't know. Now, here is a point where Trump lawyers was losing it and the judge kicked him out. The judge was through with this whole questioning pertaining to Fannie Willis. I mean, there was it was starting to get ridiculous. It wasn't even irrelevant to the case, but has he ever visited you at the place you laid your head? So let's be clear, because you lied in this. This let me tell you which one you lied in, right here. I think you lied right here. No, 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 no. no. This is the truth, Judge. And this it, is, it, it is a lie. It is a lie. Ms. Willis, you see, Mr. Sena, I think you. We're going to take five minutes. Do that in five. 
<laughs> Fireworks in court as we've listened to District Attorney oh, Fonnie Willis like, testifying okay, go. uh, regarding the like, details okay, of her I'll relationship uh, with one of her lead prosecutors, Nathan Wade. Uh, the defense there uh, asking her questions about when their relationship started, uh, when their relationship ended. So your office objected to us getting um, Delta records for flights that you may have taken with no, Mr. Wade. And, well, no, 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 look. Uh, I object to you getting records. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. So my question was, you have any problem? I object to getting any personal records of mine. We're not dealing with privilege through a witness. And I'm not, no, 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 I'm not dealing with privilege. What um, we had offered to put them in camera for the court to review, and I just want to know if she has any That's problem. That's not something to deal with with a witness. <clears throat> okay, um, you have to file as part of your job something called an income and financial disclosure report, correct? That's correct. And you filed your first one. So you filed two today, is that right? Is it two or three? I probably would have filed 21, 22. And maybe I haven't filed 23 yet, because isn't it due like June of the next year? April, I believe. So you filed, let's see, you filed your first one, it looks like April 15th, 2022. And your second one, um, April 17th, 2023. Does that sound familiar? That, I don't remember the dates, but you're an officer of the court. I'm gonna hope you're telling the truth now. May I, pro may I approach the witness? You may. Thank you. Um, I already gave the state a copy. Exhibits 20 and 21, if you take a look at those. And I'm part of the search that I've been that Can somebody bring me some? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Guys are getting a little old. I'm going to need you to step out. Step out, ma'am. <clears throat> the purpose is to... Oh, yeah. It was getting pretty, pretty ugly. See, here's the thing. The, the Trump legal team has went through several, several avenues, several directions in trying to throw out this Georgia thing. He tried to do the angle of him getting immunity. He tried to go to angle that it wasn't his fault. He tried to go to angle that it was legitimate. He tried so many different scenarios. This is his last scenario because in the past... Degrading women has worked. He has won when it comes to degrading women because, you know, the old religious beliefs where men feel they're the head of the house and women's supposed to bow down and rub your feet and clean and be like a maid or whatever is still embedded in his mind. He feel he can probably get somewhere with this because diminishing women and making them look like some apple eaters, as they call in the Bible, you know, adolescents, so to speak, has always worked for him. And that's what he's doing right now. But the truth is the truth. So he can try to derail it. He can try to dissect it. He can try to overturn it. He can do whatever he needs to do to try to lie. Because that's what he's doing. All he wants. If I was a judge, I would throw this whole questioning, this whole proceeding, this whole whatever they were trying to do out and disqualify and throw this whole, okay, we we not, not even bring her up here anymore because this whole case against her is ridiculous. So we're just going to throw that out. We're not derailing nothing, but we're just going to throw whatever this question and whatever you're trying to do out because you're not proving anything. You're just wasting time. They just keep wasting, 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 wasting time. That's what they're doing. But now that we're on the subject of Donald Trump, let's talk about Donald Trump a little bit more. Okay, it seems that Former President Donald Trump has recently made a social media post about this uh, Alexi Navalines. I think his name his name is Alexi Alexi Navalines' death. This 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 gentleman here apparently. In comparison, he tried to compare his legal battles to the death of this Alexi Alexei. I believe I believe his name is Alexei Navalny. Something like that. Anyways, he died in Russia. And he trying to compare his legal battles to this guy here. And you got to understand. With this comparison to his legal battles he's facing, including a New York fraud ruling that could result in paying fines exceeding to over a half, well over, 
a half a billion dollars, which is three hundred. Well, not so quite, but damn near three hundred and fifty-five million dollars to be exact. And then there's other things and other uh, fines and crap that he has to pay. <laughs> Is really getting up there to pretty much yes about a half a million dollars that he's been ordered to pay so far now additionally there is a growing acceptance of Russian expansionism in the Republican Party in the age of Trump see Trump always been accepting of the Russian party and expansion of a Russian party and having them a part of the election and um, Nikki Haley is drawing contrast with Trump in the North Remember Nikki Haley, y'all know who Nikki Haley is, right? Okay, I think I explained to you it's Nikki Haley. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nikki Haley. This is Nikki Haley is drawing contrast with Trump in South Carolina. Um Prime Moreover, Trump, aside from an off Aside from all that, he is trying to promote his $359 branded shoes as sneaker con following this multi-billion dollar ruling against him. So he's trying to sell his gold sneakers with the American flag flag on there with his little name right here called Trump. I don't know what the heck he's talking about doing. I don't know what, what's going on with that. But anyway, so that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to sell his damn near $400 <laughs> pair of sneakers. Now you're going to say these events reflect the ongoing developments and discussions surrounding Trump legal battles, political activities, and public statements. So, you understand here, Trump is trying to make money. He's currently broke. He can't go sell him on his property because it currently is in lien. And the government is kind of holding that for investigation. So, he can't do that. But then, recent news came out that he has property in Russia. That he did not disclose in his taxes. He did not disclose in his court ruling. He didn't disclose at all. Someone had to do a deep dive into his history to figure out that Trump has several properties in Russia. And he failed to disclose that. So, he keeps lying and keeps withholding information about his money. Okay? He didn't even disclose the fact that he had money in Russia. He didn't disclose the fact that he had property in Russia. Even though he could have, they could have asked anyone who knew him that he had property in Russia. I know he had property in Russia. But I didn't think he did not disclose that information. But apparently he did not disclose that information. So, um, take a look at this. Discovery was made that Trump actually owns properties in Russia registered to his name which are kept secret. The United States government was never aware of this. Please watch till the end as this news will make your day. Before we proceed, please take some precious seconds of your time. Every indication, Trump bought these properties when he was still in office as president. This is against the Constitution and given the relationship between the two names. This discovery came in today after an investigator working on Trump's classified documents discovered the secret files of Trump. He uncovered documents that were more shocking to him than anyone else. It didn't surprise us after we heard the news because there is nothing impossible for Trump to do. Trump got himself involved in so many illegal businesses that could not allow him to be walking out freely, while others who committed crimes lesser than what Trump has been doing are currently spending their lives in prison. We were also hinted by an insider investigating the case that the International Court of Justice has just issued an order to the U.S. government to have Trump arrested immediately as he is needed by the International Court of Justice for illegal businesses that have just been uncovered. At first, they only discovered the illegal dealings made with Russia, but it has been found beyond that. We wrote Trump asking questions, but as of now, we have not received back from Trump and his team. We are currently monitoring the situation and will bring you updates. Thanks for watching. Please kindly let us know what you think about this in the comment section and do not forget to subscribe to our channel. There it is. There it is. So you have Donald Trump who's trying to sell his sneakers. You have Donald Trump lying about what property he has in Russia. Here he got some property in London too. And um some more property overseas. He he didn't disclose a lot of his properties or his bank accounts. He just a con man. I'm, I mean, I, I hate to say this about your your boy, you Republicans who are voting for him because of personal reasons, because his damn show ain't for political reasons, because he doesn't have any. So he's a con artist. Y'all say he was a great businessman. Every business he had failed. He ended up filing bankruptcy. He still owe banks. He still he still haven't paid these banks back. They're still PO'd. 
And sometimes, I, I believe I read that they wonder why they kept giving him money, probably because who he was. So he's trying to get into the White House so he can, you know, declare immunity. And all his homeboys can clear, declare immunity. I don't even know how he's even a legitimate candidate to be president anyway with all these file, filings against him. I mean, God darn, you have to go through more legality just to get work in the freaking hospital. But he can be a completely criminal, which he is in fact, and still have a candidacy and presidency and people are still voting for this man. People are still rooting for him. I don't know what the heck is wrong with our people. I used to be friends with Republicans. We may have different political views in terms of what we believe is right and what da 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 da. But I was still able to be friends with these people because I knew they were very intelligent people. You know, I knew they were very, very intelligent. We just have different upbringing and the way we see the world and how they were up, up brought from their childhood was definitely different from what I was raised to believe. And we understood that. I may not have agreed to it, but I understood it. But in this freaking case, I, if I see anyone, no offense, who is sitting up here with, without any, any evidentiary or any point to give me, to tell me that Donald Trump is a great candidate for president, I'm going to have to second guess my friendship to you. Because this man has done more vile things than any other president. He has literally declared the worst president in history. And that's a fact. It's all over social media. So if any Republican is still voting for them, you are making your Republican Party look bad. And that's not good. You cannot be voting for this man despite all his evidence in the history. You can't be a woman and vote for him. He has no respect for women at all. He has no respect for women. None. He don't even... Seriously, he think women are property and, and should submit to men. Their bodies is not theirs. You don't have power over your, your body. It's my body. You can't get rid of a baby. It's my organs. I tell you if you can get rid of your baby or not. You bow down to me. This is the frame, frame of mind that Donald Trump is and his parties are. They're still stuck in the stone age, so to speak. Okay? Not only that, he's a current artist. He's a rapist. He's a liar. He's a cheater. Seriously. He is not what America should represent. And if you're going to have a Republican person, at least have a person who has some definitely academic intelligence and some kind of decorum about himself to represent, yeah, in a snooty Republican way, but at least we can say he's not a freaking idiot and a current artist. Come on now, y'all Republican Party can do better than this. This is embarrassing for you guys. It's embarrassing for America in general. And I am done with the situation. And if this woman who's, I'm assuming, is only uh, working for him because she's getting paid, I, I, can't, I, mean, I can't even be a woman that work for this man because you don't have respect for her either. Soon as she get out of line, you better believe he's going to talk about her like a dog either. He has no respect for women at all. Period. So if y'all feel that he does, you guys are crazy. You know, so we're going to move on from that. Okay, we're going to move on for another subject here. We're going to talk about Jennifer Lopez. LD, I'm not sure what you're talking about in the comment section. You said, no need to apologize. Thank you so very much. And you said, get out of the LR paradigm. Not sure what you mean. And you said, so to the poll, vote to the vote alchemy. Okay, you got to be more in detail. The coding that you put in LD, I don't understand it at all. I don't understand it at all. Okay. On Friday, Jennifer Lopez released a new project called This Is Me. Now, a love story is called This Is Me Now. This Is Me, dot, 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 now. Kind of like what Beyonce said when she said, I am, and she had dot, 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 Sasha Fierce, whatever. So it's kind of the same thing. It's a love story, which is a, it's both a studio album and an hour-long musical film. There is also a behind-the-scenes documentary called The Greatest Love Story Never Told, which will be released February 27th, so in about six days. Both firm projects are streaming on Prime Video. Well, okay, you understand. While Lopez has hinted that this album may be her last, most of the buzz has centered on the cinematic portion of This Is Me. It is loosely, but I don't think this is going to be her last because she loved performing. She loved dancing. She loved the spotlight. She just loved it. Blah, 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 blah. So it's not. It's not. I guarantee she probably take a long break or whatever, but it's not going to be her last. 
But it's loosely by Lagraf. Oh, okay. You said LR is left, right? Okay. What do you mean get out of the L, the left, right? Okay, so get out of the L, the left, right paradigm. Can you explain that a little bit more? LD, I'm just curious. What do you mean by that? So it's a it's a loosely biographical musical mishmash of myths, dreams, sequences, therapy sessions, and a nosy but well-meaning zodiacal. It's kind of like a zodiacal council kind of. It's hymned with Jane Fonda, who I'm a huge fan of, Kiki Palmer, Post Malone, Neil deGrasse, Tyson, among other great prominent actors and actresses. Okay, so to the poll is Trump's alchemy, commercial trying to get people to vote to get their energy. Oh, okay. So to the poll, he's trying to get people to vote. Oh, okay, okay. So are you a Trump supporter? I'm just curious. Okay. I'm assuming you're a Trump supporter. Okay. Anyway, so understand Lopez funded this project. I mean, she literally used $20 million of her own money to fund this project. And almost everyone in her circle was skeptical of this film. Everybody thought, this is crazy. Why are you taking $20 million of your money to do this video album project, whatever she's going on tour to? You know, she's literally, seriously, like, I have to do this. This is me. I have to explain my side of the story. This is me. So it's literally what she's trying to convey. So this is me, dot, 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 now, is a unique project that is the most J-Lo thing J-Lo has ever done. In it, she sings, she dances, raps, channels, all of her rom-com superpowers. The movie's foundation is an indigenous Puerto Rican myth about the origin of the hummingbird. I always like that about her, even though she probably, um, you know, dabble a little bit in other cultures. She always stayed true to her roots and she made sure she always represented it. So that's a good thing. Some people convey against their roots or they straddle in the fence, as we know some people. Anyway, the film first big set piece takes place in a dark, dirty factory where all the workers are women with industrial chick lunch boxes and jumpsuits. J-Lo is wearing a tank top. She ran a tank top and elbow socks. Suddenly, there is an emergency at the factory. They have run out of roses to make their red petal hearts from whatever. Despite the factory maybe being on the verge of exploding, everyone looks great though. I mean, the dance sequences are nice. Most of the film's hero's journey is structured around Lopez's weekly counseling sessions with uh, Fat Joe, which you see there. So she's having these weekly counseling sessions with Fat Joe, who I'm a fan of as well. A therapist who is so happen to be a Taurus. You understand, Tauruses are from our history. They are the architectures and the chefs and the artistic people from our history. They built, and during that time, a lot of historical and artistic and grand structures were built during the time of Taurus, the age of Taurus. So if you know Tauruses, they most of them are foodies and they're very, very innovative. They are some very, uh, maybe carpenters, contractors, designers. They are great friends, listeners. They can be stubborn sometimes, you know, but they are some very interesting people. Now, what you say? You said they want grace and peace. Keisha, thank you. Um, eight, Barbie, I'm sorry. Um, and you said they want to divide us from giving us two choices, Republican and Democrat, because they won't. The way we fight each other, we need to see this government is working both sides to control the narrative. This is true, saying LD. Okay, true. And you said, if I am not a Trump supporter, that does not make me a Biden supporter or support anything these things. I know, right? Don't you hate when they put you in those boxes? I completely agree. I don't, I'm not agreeing with either Trump or Biden. You know, and you cannot not vote, you know. You have to vote for somebody, especially if you don't want the wrong person to be elected. So I understand that completely. You are 100% right. So far, the people who are running, I made this very imperative and blatant in all my live shows. I am not even trying to vote for. Because I don't agree with a lot of things. There are certain things about Biden I don't agree with. There's everything about Trump I don't agree with. 
So no one, I, I just don't know. No, I don't feel the people who are currently running for president is going toward the future that we need to go to. Everyone is stuck in the past. We have old ancient Biden and then we have old ancient Trump. We need someone who is more of this generation or know of this generation and can move us into the proper direction that we need to go. And so far, I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing that people are stuck in the past. They want to rule our bodies and rule our minds and rule the way we think, what we do. And I'm so sick of that. We need something different. We need to get out of this old stigma. Get rid of these old people and get somebody new in there. It's getting on my nerve. Now, you, Kimberly, you said I used to be a fan of J-Lo, but not since she made that All Lives Matter quote. Plus, let's be honest, Jennifer is possibly taking time to coddle her husband Ben from his drinking. <laughs> Oh, wow. I agree with you on that, Kimberly. <laughs> wow. Well, if we don't vote, LD, the person we do really don't want to be elected will be elected. You know, so it, it's kind of a, you know, kind of in a hard place, you know. We have Trump up there. He going to end up turning the clocks back and probably ignite Jim Crow laws knowing this man. You know, he has no respect. And Russia really going to be in all in our politics and our White House and everything. And, you know, Putin, as soon as he get his way, he's going to pretty much get rid of Trump, you know, and do what he has to do. You know what I mean? But um, uh, getting back to this uh, video album thing, Majir. Okay, now. Aside from that, much of the film's hero journey is structured around Lopez's weekly counseling sessions. I can't even speak. Weekly counseling sessions with Fat Joe, as I said, a therapist who is a Taurus and da 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 da. Okay, but he had had pretty much what I convey from it. He had a really endless patience. He had no patience for Lopez's vivid, bonker dreams. He refers to Lopez as love addict, <laughs> anonymous. <laughs> he was like love addicts, anonymous, which is a lot like a narcotic anonymous, alcoholic anonymous, except with you know, much more, con you know, contemporary dances or whatever. So it is Zodiacal. I'm assuming it's Zodiacal. I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce it, but that's what she called it. It's like a Zodiacal Council is the star-studded Greek chorus of This Is Me. They are all seen and deeply invested in Lopez's life. So they sit high amongst the star little tunnel. Portal there. I know the Electoral College, I know in main parts of the United States. Yeah, that's another thing. I wonder if we should abolish the Electoral College because they have no way of knowing what we are as a demographic. I wonder if we should abolish the Electoral College altogether. Because most Electoral College committees are considered old and they're stuck in their ways. Do they give these people a morality test occasionally? I mean, seriously. Because that needs to be blown out of the water altogether, for real. Mm -hmm. Hey babe, I'm live. Where are you going? Do something to eat. You want to talk? Uh, where are you going? I don't know. Wherever you want. Uh, surprise me. But I think we shouldn't seriously abolish the electoral college because they are seriously old-fashioned. Let's be realistic here. Well, yeah, I believe that, Kimberly. She probably do want it to beat the Lemonade album. Yes, but okay. You said the movie so does Trump will be the president of, for 50 years. Who what movies? Oh, LD, seriously. You remember, I know, I know they said that. But here's the thing. That may have been a prophecy, but there are several prophecies that did not come true. We have the chance to derail the prophecy here. That's because it's written for it to come true doesn't mean it's going to come true. Okay. <laughs> she said bye aloha thank you <laughs> I know I know okay but that prophecy may not be me for Trump it could be for someone else the leader you know it could be for world family have you checked you know we'll talk about that a little later LD okay now this video album that Jennifer Lopez is talking about is very good and it's very artistic, okay? She didn't learn her lesson, though. She didn't learn her lesson and never listened to what the Zodiac gods and goddesses said. She convinced herself that what she wanted wasn't bad, but her drive to never give up. So, 
even though she had this video album, she was explaining like I'm trying to chase for love, going back to her childhood and her childhood dream to have the perfect marriage, yada, da, 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 to be accepted, to be loved, to have that love security. This has to be deeply rooted in her childhood where she must have felt not loved as a kid. I'm sensing that she had a, I don't know, deep disconnection with some father. Maybe she didn't feel the love from her father that she wanted. So she always searching for that love and doing whatever she can to try to get it. And apparently she may have seen some of those characteristics. And um, uh, Ben Affleck apparently among other gifts and um, blessings that Ben Affleck has. So I can understand why she's trying to get with him. You know what I mean ladies? Yes, uh-huh. He's hanging low. He's very blessed. Okay, anyway. So there could be other deeply childhood rooted reasons why Jennifer Lopez is feeling to need to always be in love and never be alone is means she's afraid to be alone with her thoughts and she has to be married it's no longer I'm starting is ne it's not love it's an obsession and anything that it's an obsession is not love obsession is not love the rooted of any obsession is something deeply psychological and mentally and emotional wrong with the person. If someone is obsessed, obsessed with you, they do not love you. Obsession, again, people, is not love. She's obsessed with being in love. She liked the idea of being in love. In this whole movie, album, whatever, she goes through, she's in a heart factory, make sure her heart is working right. You know, everybody in the factory makes sure it works, but it started plumbing and going crazy, whatever. And then you go through different segments of her life and different segments of her marriage where she married this person and work out. She married this person and work out. Da, 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 and she said her goal was Ben Affleck. Okay. Ben Affleck is the only Caucasian guy that she got with. The Caucasian guy, no offense to my Caucasian people. I love you, but I'm speaking facts in the video. Okay. Caucasian guy that she got with. Okay. Who owns a former plantation. Who was going to sell his plantation but decided to keep it and marry Jennifer Lopez on this same plantation. The only person who broke off the engagement with her. The only person who broke off the engagement with her. Not she breaking it off. She, he broke it off. So this was a failure that she refused to let go. I got rejected by a white man. I got rejected. No, I'm going to prove to people that I not only can marry a white man, but I can stay in love with him and be in love with him forever and ever and ever because it's my goal to be accepted by the white community. This is a goal. This is an achievement. She may be in love, but it's deeply rooted somewhere else. Let's be realistic here. She is definitely in love with being in love. She is definitely in love with being in love. Now, I do hope that this relationship with her being that Fleck does triumph and she stays married to him forever because I'm sick of this crap. I'm sick of her. this going in and out of relationship. It's starting to get kind of sad, but I'm hoping it does work out. I really do. Okay. Personally speaking as a woman, it's kind of disturbing and somewhat, I don't know, weird watching her jump in out of relationship so fast. It's, it makes you look at her in a different light. I think she's lost her mind, but however, she put it in the movie, and you would think the movie, or all of her Zodiacs were saying, what is she doing? She should take a break. Take a break, Jennifer. Be alone, Jennifer. Zodiac's up in the little celestial portal. She needs to take a break. What is she doing? She's not listening. No, I have to do this. I have to fall in the hummingbird. I have to fix the rose petals. I have to fix this. I have to be in love. This is her mindset. It's an obsession. Her ending goal, being married to a Caucasian guy. Got married to him on a former plantation. She reached to go. Yay for Jennifer. Mm-hmm. Now she's saying, I have this video album and I'm done. I'm done. That's what she's saying. However, getting back to the credit, the first of all is amazing. The artistic, the storyline, it was beautiful. I will watch it again just for the artistic creative in this in this whole little video album. This is, I mean, y'all gotta go watch it. It's very artistic. Her singing is not the greatest and you kind of wish you shut up. But other than that, it was beautiful, artistic, loved it. Mwah. I think she lost her mind though, but it's beautiful. The dancing was nice. It was gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. She didn't ever learn her goddamn lesson, but who the fuck cares? She's happy and I hope we don't have to go through this whole little endless loop of her falling in love and marrying ever again. 
because I'm sick of looking at it and it's getting on my nerves and I'm starting to think she's crazy. So we're going to go ahead and just move on from this warm whatever of whatever. I need a drink now because I feel like I'm in this endless maze of her crazy mind. So when you drink this, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you have some liquor because you're going to be going through a whirlwind of something. You are entering in the craziness of Jennifer Lopez's mind where she does not learn her lesson. You would think, I'm going to be free. Hell no. No. At the end, you see Ben Affleck and she has not learned her lesson. She feel Ben Affleck was her goal and she completed her her goal to be married to a white man who owns a plantation. But if she's happy, yeah. Let's move on to something else because this is you know my nurse. All right, now, we are going to go to T.D. Jakes. I know she is, right? She's running for Elizabeth. Elizabeth oh, come on now. Don't even compare her to Elizabeth Taylor. Elizabeth Taylor has some morals. She picked her man mostly based on, you know, uh, why am I even comparing the two? Anyway, different, 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 different time. You know, I don't. I can't even compare Jennifer Lopez with her. No, no, no. J Elizabeth Taylor married love in some cases. Jennifer Lopez doing it because she cannot be alone. During the last days of Elizabeth Taylor life, she was alone. Okay, she was alone. Oh, I did see that movie to sell. It was the perfect role for her, but they should did it in her mind. Not that man who turned into an abused child to a... Uh, where you get the picture? Where you turned into? They should did it in her mind. So this is kind of like the cell. You know, I take that back. Yeah. This is kind of like the cell, but in a very artistic, beautiful way. First of all, the video, the movie video is amazing. You got to give her a props. It's so damn artistic. Damn, it was nice and artistic. I saw all those graphics. I was like, this is really nice. You, you, you know, you not listen to her terrible singing, but everything else is pretty gorgeous. It's something to watch. I'm looking just for the artistic creativity of it. I mean, the, the singing was whew, really bad. But the dancing and the, everything else was really nice. Really nice. And she did learn her lesson. So, I don't know. It doesn't even matter. Yeah, I keep, I'm trying to get back to T.D. Jakes now, Kimberly. But truth. Definitely true. Okay. T.D. Jakes. It seems that T.D. Jakes is going to head to head with this Geno Genies guy. This is Geno Genies. Okay. Now, <sighs> hmm. Gino Genies, I believe he does not believe in gay marriage. He is a bit of a homophobic. And then we have the Stradlin Defense homophobic T.D. Jakes, who in the past was homophobic, but now he's saying he's not homophobic. So we, we are, you already know the details of his ho homophobicness. <sighs> we already know why he's in his whatever so what we're going to do here i'm gonna play a clip where this gino genie's guy who don't believe in gay marriage and td jakes is who he supposed to be yeah i know i saw that have you swallowed swallowed he said it was such passion. I'm like, okay, are you going through some vivid memories, T.D. Jakes? Ew. Ew. Okay. Now here's the video right here. After publicly denouncing Gino Jennings' relationship with P. Diddy and his reluctance to teach the truth about homosexuality, T.D. Jakes and the FBI are now pursuing Jennings. Jennings disclosed that during a long discussion with the ministers in the Black Caucus, it was clear that T.D. Jakes had gone too far. It has been stated that Jakes rallied his attorneys, legislators, and fellow clergy members to reapply to the Federal Communications Commission. By removing Gino Jennings from all media platforms and suing anyone who discusses him on social media, they hope to silence him. This discovery suggests a high-stakes conflict between powerful personalities in the religious spheres, adding another level of intricacy to the continuing drama. Jennings will not back down from a challenge because he is unwavering in his devotion to speaking the truth. He made it apparent that he has been targeted by the FBI in the past and that this is nothing new for him. With audacity, 
Gino Jennings declared that they all wanted him to cease criticizing homosexuality. He was very emphatic in saying that he will not waver from what the Bible says and that no amount of money could persuade him to stop preaching the truth. He is unwavering in his resolve to deliver the unadulterated word of scripture. Unfazed by anything. We had a lengthy conversation on Tuesday night with the very kind and dignified head of the Black Caucus. Pastor Jennings, let me tell you that this is the reality, he continued. Above all, T.D. Jake's church has intentionally attacked God's truth. Tuesday evening, we had a long talk. <laughs> with the head of the Black Caucus and very respectable, very polite. He said, Pastor Jesus, let me tell you that this is how it is. The Potter House, T.D. Jake Stretch, have specifically above all others targeted the truth of God he lawyered up contact his lawyers and even if he seek to reach out to politicians and whatever stars and men and women of renown to connect with him to contact the FCC to ban me off all airways and to sue those who's speaking about him on social media. <laughs> well, that would include the suit going to some of his followers. Not only that, they want me to stop speaking against homosexuality. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Okay, um, hmm. Yeah. I'll let, let's look at this video and then I, I give you my um Gino Jennings is a wolf in sheep's clothing like Jesus talked about he's a false teacher that's leading hundreds of thousands of people to hell if you don't believe me watch this clip they're not saved with faith alone that's right there is no trinity there never was a trinity Gino Jennings proudly teaches that you're not saved by faith alone but you have to have faith and works we know from the scriptures that this is completely false we know that we are saved by faith alone in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and works are the evidence of our salvation but not what brings about our salvation and he also proudly denies that Trinity and says that anyone who believes the Trinity is a liar that's on their way to hell. But we clearly see from the baptism of Jesus, God the Father speaking from heaven, God the Son being baptized, and God the Holy Spirit coming down out of heaven. Three persons, one being. Run from Geno Jennings' false teachings and believe on the true biblical Christ. Okay, okay, here's my commentary about this uh, Geno Jennings uh, person. Okay, now... <clears throat> Some aspects of what he's saying is completely true. I completely agree with. Um, I am a little uh, confused, a little bewildered of T.D. Jakes all of a sudden with homophobia and homophobic or homosexuals. Is they homosexuals the proper term they like to be called or just gay you know they don't want to be called anything else um i'm a little bit worried because he wasn't with it back in the day td jakes was just like gino and then you know he started to get the heat from that community he changed his ways he changed his vibe at least that's what he says in paper even though despite his actions and him being a part of that community but we ignore that for now but it has been apparent that T.D. Jakes is trying to get people to stop talking about him and try to get anyone who is talking about him banded. You cannot stop freedom of speech, T.D. Jakes. You cannot go suing anyone who talked negative about you because you get up there and talk your narrative about 
all kinds of people in general, whether it's generalized or it's directly towards someone, you do it all the time when you're up there. So he cannot tell people what to say. I understand him being upset, but he cannot do that. He is not God or goddesses, whoever. You cannot stop free will. You cannot stop freedom of speech. Now, Gino is against gays. He, he's against homosexuality because he said that's what's in the Bible. Jesus, whoever y'all follow, did not say this. It was said of him saying this, but he did not say this. Okay? In ancient history, sexuality was a freedom of expression. There wasn't no singular place or sexuality that you had to become. During the turning of Christianity, men who put together the Bible, put that in there, said gay or two men or two whatever is not to be. Paraphrasing. Okay? Now, Gino do have a lot of true qualities and a lot of things. He does. But I bet if we look through his history and his back party and his homeboys that's sitting back there smiling and ha 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 about their closets and what they are doing in terms of being solely against the gay community, I can guarantee you they will be guilty of it themselves. Any man who is that 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 passionate about gayness is someone who is probably battling with something within themselves. Because if you are neutral and you are a strong individual about your gayness or your sexuality, you don't give two flying figs of what a person is. Who cares? But he is tunnel vision against gay people. Which makes me wonder a lot of things about himself. Now, of course, you're going to get the old Christianity people. I was once those people, you know, who are going to root for him. I'm with him. He's this. Who? No. No. I agree with some things he said and I disagree with other things he said. I do agree with him when it comes to T.D. Jakes and what T.D. Jakes is trying to do. I'm, believe it or not, nothing has happened in T.D. Jakes. He's been declared a billionaire. He's still making deals and willing and dealing. Nothing has happened to him. These allegations with Sean Combs has not affected his platform at all, at least for the time being. But karma comes in doses. So I guess we'll find that out later. Okay? Let's move on. Now, there has been some kind of rumor about Kelly Rowland. Yeah, true. Now, yes, faith without work is definitely true. Right. Completely agree. The potty house. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Jenny's is speaking some truth. Certain things he say, I really agree with him 100%. But the gayness, I, I, don't, I don't agree with him. I'm sorry. That's something the church put in that Bible. People will probably put that Bible together in the church and probably gay themselves. I'm just saying. Anyway, Kelly Rowland is, seems to be in heat these days. I don't even know why this is even news. This is ridiculous. But apparently Kelly, Kelly Rowland, my cold Korean sister, um, apparently had a dramatic walk-off on today's show on Thursday, which apparently was in response to Savannah Guthrie's questions about Beyonce, apparently. They going back and forth on why she walked out. She hasn't said anything. She needs to get on there and just tell the truth. Not the size of her dressing room, the rap has learned. So apparently it wasn't the size of the dressing room. It was questions about, about the Beyonce. Last week, the singer and actress abruptly left the morning news show set with initial reports finding that Rollins was reacting to her dressing room not being up to par. Living, it seemed like she, she left to host, you know, at the last minute. She's supposed to be a co-anchor. So Rita Orr, who I've been booked as a guest, stepped up to co-host at the last minute. So no one really knows why she did this. Everyone playing a guessing game. However, it seemed like an individual knowledge of the situation told the rap that Kelly was offended that Savannah repeatedly and aggressively asked her about Beyonce, which was the real reason behind the walk-off. 
The story was spun that Kelly didn't like her dressing room, but she has been on the Today Show numerous of times. She and her team know the dressing room setup. That would not come as a surprise at all, the individual said. Kelly was upset about Savannah's aggressive questioning about Beyonce. She and her team were not happy and felt disrespected. In a Thursday interview, Guthrie asked, what do you think about your friend Beyonce prior to Roland's exit? Roland was a member of a girl, as you know, the girl group, you know, Destiny Child. And it was asking about her Texas Hold'em. And, um, yeah. That's what it was saying. But then I saw on social media that it wasn't about Beyonce. So, to be frank, no one knows why she walked off. Okay. No one knows why she walked off. Everyone is playing the guessing game. No one knows why Kelly Rowland walked off. They have no idea. Okay. It could have been a dressing room. She is a big star. She is an individual. I would get tired of people comparing me to Beyonce too. That would drive me fucking nuts. Every time I'm trying to get something done, you guys are comparing me to this woman. That would annoy me to so much freaking anger. First of all, we don't know what, I understand what you're saying, eight, but we don't know what the gods and goddesses are saying. It's not like they speak back to you, okay? We only know what the church put it in the Bible. Yes, biologically knowing, yes, it's not imperative, it's not possible to have children and a family with the same sex, but love has no gender. You can't control who you love. Just because, first of all, You'll find most gay people in church. No offense. Most religious people are probably gay. And I know that for a fact. People shouldn't force you to tell you who you love. That is not our place. You can't. You're already trying to control women's bodies. Now you're trying to control me what my heart tells me who to love. What the hell? What's next? Stay out of our minds. Stay out of our hearts. And stay out of our biological systems. Let people love who they love. It's a stupid debate. It's stupid. It's just stupid. I was once in that mindset. They brainwash you to think all kinds of things. And you've gotten out the person who's brainwashed you to think this is undercover gay. So, ugh. 86 that. Now, getting back to Kelly Rowland. Kelly Rowland is a superstar on her own. I would be very irritated if people kept comparing me to Beyonce. I would, as a matter of fact, I've been through this kind of before. My mom passed away, unfortunately, years ago, years ago, and I was left her house. My goal is to turn that house into mine. But every time someone came over or trying to come over, they kept saying, my mom's name. This is my mom's house. Everywhere I turned in my mom's, my late mother's house was filled with her dreams, the way she wanted to construct it. The old house was seeping with her. I was like, this would never be my house. I don't care if I renovate it to my liking. It would never be my house. They kept comparing me. They kept, every time I get in the house, I'm talking, it's my mom, my mom, my mom. Like, I'm trying to get over the death of my mom and become me. May she rest in peace. But, so I, I, I was so happy to lose that house. And my goal was to replace every bit of furniture that was hers, everything that was hers, to my liking. And that's what I did. I didn't want to be reminded of her. I didn't want people to compare us to, I know she's my mom and I love her, but may she rest in peace, but I did not want to be compared to her at all. So I can understand Kelly Rowland as a cold craze to have your own individuality and not be compared to Beyonce. You don't want to go on a freaking interview and they're asking you about this fucking woman. That would piss me off to so much. Like, I am sick of this. I had an amazing career. I have movies on my resume. Hit records on my resume. Why are you asking about this woman? My resume is completely different from hers. Literally. You know, just stop. So I don't blame her. Whatever the reason may be, I would have walked off too. Like, I've had it with this. I have a movie coming out, you know... I have all these projects coming out. You act, No, just no. Just no. If you want to know about Beyonce, ask Beyonce. Good luck on trying to get her to interview because she doesn't really interview with American people anymore. 
But just don't ask me at all about her. And I can understand her being upset about that. I believe so too, Kimberly. I believe so too. I believe it was about Beyonce and that pissed her off. Exactly. You said, you said, uh, plus she may have already know what B is about to jump away from the Jay-Z train when he gets his surviving Jay Moore. <laughs> I know, I'm still waiting on that. <laughs> Valerie said, so Biden is not a criminal, abortion is murder, it's not the birth control, girl, get a grip, so who do you think is best? Okay, here is my, um, considering we're talking about random talk here, here is my little piece on the whole birth control situation. I am on the fence with birth control. I don't believe that any man should tell us what we can do with our bodies, but I do believe that there is, before the child gets a heart, before the heart is formed in the embryo when it's just a cell it's just the, an attachment to the female's inner uterus okay i think that is the only time frame where abortion is legally to get when the child starts forming in the heart which i believe is after six weeks or 10 weeks, I believe. I forgot the time frame. Someone could look that up for me. That'd be great. Um, I think that's when it's probably is murder. Some people say after the brain or something like that. Um, when does the child, when does uh, embryo uh, heart forms? I don't even know how to embryo. Uh, heart forms see here okay here we go let's see here when does the embryo heart forms what stage is that we're gonna find that out right now oh don't say that nap she's not the backup she's the co-singer to my she's the backup behave yourself Okay, um, the critical or development of the heart reflect the prominent that appears already your surface in the heart forms and blah, 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 blah. Let's say 18 days, that's not true. Uh, two heart valves. Um, embryo heart formation. Is that the heart... I forgot. You know, y'all don't even know. But anyways, I think when the embryo is, um, not the heart, is it five week? Five weeks it is? It's five weeks? Yeah. When the heart, yeah, it's five weeks. Five weeks to about seven weeks. Got it. Okay. So I believe seven weeks should be the limit for someone to get an abortion because that's when the heart is kind of fully developed, you know. After that, I think it will be considered murder, but... They were extending it to like three months and stuff. That's that is murder, but when it's just a cell and not fully developed, I don't think that's murder. But that's just my opinion about that. But they shouldn't tell us not to have abortions. They need to stay out of our uterus. What the fuck, I don't know why I'm even having this conversation with y'all. <clears throat> um, she is not a backup singer. Now, come on, now she's a singer. Come on, the backup singer. Stop it. She's not. Anyway, getting back to, okay. Then there's some rumors about King Charles. Apparently King Charles apparently was reduced to cheers. But he was talking about his uh, support, his cancer diagnosis, even though we didn't really get any proof. We just got him delivering a speech or whatever. And he hasn't shown any signs of him having cancer or any... Um, Proof that he's going through any of the steps to get rid of his cancer. All we have is his word. So uh, if he is uh, cancer, you know, it, you know, good luck to him, whatever. But if he's not, well, anyway. First, I want to say this. King Charles, at the end of the day, is a great actor. Remember, when he was younger, he wanted to be an actor. He was really good at it. So if anyone who know how to cry on cue, act. Be whoever he want is freaking King Charles. He's been doing it all his damn life. So we don't know what the hell is going on with the royal family. We don't know what the hell is going on with Kimberly or 
what the hell her goddamn name is, Catherine, Princess Catherine. We don't know what's going on here. They went from her being out for six weeks or whatever, how many weeks to nine months. Okay, what is she pregnant? Okay, is she pregnant? Why hide it? Who cares? She already got a million kids already. Who cares? So I think these two are fighting. I think King Charles, Queen Camilla, and Princess Catherine, and Prince William are having a battle because remember, they were never so with the whole King Charles becoming king. Prince William wanted to become king because it was brooded and everyone wanted him to become king. They don't respect King Charles at all. They don't respect his oppositions, his philosophies. And it's been kind of a battle between these two. I think this is a battle between those four. I don't think it has nothing to do with us. I don't think it has anything to do with their people down in the UK. I think it's a battle within them, the whole little monarchy, that they're just not publicize it to anybody. That's what I think it is. Now, stop trying to put Beyonce in the front line. Kelly Rowland held her own too. You need to stop that. It would not be a Destiny's Child without Kelly Rowland. She's been there since day one. You need to stop it. You need to quit it. Okay, so I'm going to leave you guys with this message here. Okay. Now, do you guys remember I told you my bloodline? That I have some kind of um, attachment bloodline to the royal family? I still don't know how that happened. I did the ancestral thing and it led me to connections with them or whatever. Somewhere like Scotland or something. I think, uh, what's that? Queen... Uh, was it Queen Charlotte? What I want to remember. Anyway, but I may have found the proof to that lineage... In this research but before we do this I did just release a video on top five and top six you find a link in the description box about domestic violence if you are a victim of domestic violence please call the police please get it on record if you need someone else to call there is a hotline you can find on um, online I try to remember to put in the description box at the end of this after I put the timestamps you can always call me. My number is below if you are a victim of domestic violence. And that's both me, men, and women. Okay? But here is the message for Gino Jennings. Some of the messages I agree with him. The homosexuality, I'm going to disagree with him 100%. But here is the message that Gino Jennings have for the religious people or anybody in general who likes to hit a woman. Pay attention. Don't you sit there and let no man stand over you, straddling over you like you a man in the street and slap you around. That's right. And then quote scripture. Get that bum off of you. That's right. And if you're in the church and don't stop, I will throw you out. Throw you out. Throw you out. Get out of here. That's right. Get out. That's right. Hit the road, Jack. Hit the road, Jack. Don't come back no more. No more. That's right. How is it it makes you feel like a man? Well, Pastor Jennings, I saw my daddy beat up my mama. So that means you have to do it? Man, put your... Yeah, I agree with that. Yes, yes. Yeah, I know I was in a domestic relationship. I fought back. I did until he started calling me crazy and he never touched me again. So, yes, women do not let a man hit on you, okay? There's always somewhere to go. If you got to take your kids and stay in a shelter, if you got to take your kids and stay with the worst relative you don't care about, I don't care. Get to safety. Do not deal with that or just deal with him in general. If you want to go nuts on you, go nuts on him, Okay. There's plenty of weapons around the house you can use. History is a lie. How were three sons of King Charles II described during the... Okay, this is the blood, the true bloodline of the royal family. Now, it has come to some kind of note that the people who are preceding the monarchy at the time right now were taken over where they kind of killed the original kings of England, of UK, of that whole area. Hundreds of years ago, they killed the true people and they replaced it 
with the bloodline of the people you see right now. But they want their original kings and queens of that land, which I kind of hinted about years ago. But here is proof that was found about this line. Jacobite Uprisings, from the Memoirs of the Secret Services of John McKay Esquire, published in 1733. First off, at page 36, we have described Charles Lennos, Duke of Richmond, his son to King Charles II by the Duchess of Portsmouth. This is the depiction Wikipedia and most modern history books show us. Now let's read how he was described. Quote, he is a gentleman good-natured to a fault, very well Alexis, bred that, and have many valuable things in him, is an enemy to business, very credulous, well-shaped, black complexion, much like King Charles, not 30 years old. Second, John Mackey describes George Fitzroy, Duke of Northumberland, son to King Charles, bred and hath many valuable things in him, is an enemy to business, very credulous, well-shaped, black complexion, much like King Charles, not 30 years old. Second, John Mackey describes George Fitzroy, Duke of Northumberland, Son to King Charles II by the Duchess of Cleveland was one of the captains of King James's horse guards, which he quitted at the Revolution. This is the depiction on Wikipedia. Now let's read how he was described. Quote, He is a man of honor, nice in paying his debts and living well with his neighbors in the country, does not much care for the conversation of men of quality or business, is a tall black man like his father the king, about 40 years old. Next. On the same page, we have two characters related to King Charles II, so I will read the description of both. Charles, Duke of St. Albans, his son to King Charles II by Mrs. Gwynne, was made by King William, one of the bedchamber. This is the depiction on Wikipedia. Now let's read how he was described. Quote, He is a gentleman every way de bon naturel. Well-bred doth not love business, is well affected to the constitution of his country. He is of a black complexion, not so tall as the Duke of Northumberland, yet very like King Charles, turned of 30 years old. Below we have Charles Fitzroy, Duke of Graston, his grandson to King Charles II. Quote, is a very pretty gentleman, hath been abroad the world, zealous for the constitution of his country, a tall black man, about 25 years old. By now, the pattern is clear. Three sons and a grandson of King Charles II of the Stuart line were described being tall and of a black complexion, much like King Charles II. Before some smart idiot says, no, they are talking about hair color, please believe me. Ignoring the fact, complexion in early modern English meant primarily the color of one's skin. Just like in contemporary English, this coping mechanism easily disproves itself. Charles Lennox and Charles Beauclerc. Both are depicted in their white Wikipedia images clearly having brown hair. So why are they described by a contemporary who lived at the time, John Mackey, as having a black complexion if complexion somehow means hair, like and share for more lost history? And that's why we say. There you go. See, told you. There you go. I always wanted to know where the lineage started. Now I know. So, that means the current people who are occupying that rural royalness are not the true royal people. They more than likely killed the original royal people of that country. And we are seeing a bloodline of those people right now. They changed the color. They changed the faces. They changed the races. They changed everything. And the lion is so exceedingly overwhelming. It's, I don't even know what to say anymore. So the royal family who are there now, they're not the original royal people and not the legitimate royal people who's supposed to be on that monarch but until we get some period proof which we apparently do 
Because I'm sure they can base this back to the times where they were literally lynching all the kings and queens of that time. I'm sure we can get some legitimate reasons and proof of this assassination. And when it take over it took place and when the defacing and the whitewashing of that history took place, I'm sure we can do that. I'm sure it happened somewhere a couple hundred years before they started getting into the slave trade. I'm sure that's when that whole, that explains why Queen Charlotte and all the other people look, you know, like Negro people. Yeah. I guarantee it was around that transition of when it was whitewashed. And I'm just being real here. Um, I'm going to end it here. It's been real. You guys, thanks for staying throughout the duration of this video. Sorry about me yelling at my daughter. <laughs> you know, for some reason, every time I live with my husband here, he has to go out and do stuff. It annoys the hell out of me. You have no idea. And the alarm goes off and it annoys the hell out of me when that goes off. So, sorry for the inconvenience. You two have a wonderful day. And... Thanks again for staying out the duration of this video. I'm so disturbed and so pissed off right now. But I had a great time. Bye.